In our previous video, we installed ActiveMQ. In this video, we are going to publish to ActiveMQ from our existing web application. So I'm going to borrow a few things from Apache's website, including this Maven dependency. We're going to need to set up this Maven dependency to download the JAR, or the uh, Java classes that will help us write to a queue. And then we're going to need to write to the queue from our photo processing page. Now, why do we want to do this? To be honest, I had not really heard of a queue for quite a while in, in my programming career. But when, when I started out of college, a lot of times the apps we were writing were things like an employee benefits website where you could just go to a website and look at benefits. Now, when you write an employee benefits website, it has to integrate with the 401k provider, and it has to integrate with the healthcare provider, and integrate with uh, anything else, the IRS, anything else. So the story of information technology has turned from one of a lot of isolated applications to a lot of integrated applications. And with integration, we have to think about the golden nail that's going to hold things together. Many times that's a cue. Another good reason for a queue is when we want to offload a heavy process that can take place in parallel while we give a quick response to an end user. And that's what we're doing here. The user's going to upload a photo. We want to be able to upload it and move to the next step quickly and then offload the resizing of the photo, the watermarking of a photo, which we've done in a previous video. Uh, but now what we're going to do is we're going to offload that into a separate process. So queues are something that are popular and getting more popular, even though uh, there might not have been a whole lot of experience with them not too long ago. So I'm going to go to our existing web application, and I'm going to go to our POM, and I'm going to go towards the bottom and add this dependency. Okay, a little bit of uh, making this look pretty. Control Shift F and Eclipse will automatically indent for us. There we go. And it looks a little bit better. And save. Now with the palm updated, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say Maven update, and that will grab any of our new any of our new dependencies that we have. Okay, we'll let that go. Now we're also going to need a factory, and the factory is what connects us to our queue. So we're going to need a factory and we're going to need a URL to our queue. We will handle that inside of our spring file. Uh, so I'm going to go to web content and I'm going to grab just a moment here. I'm going to grab our application context, control M, put it in high definition. And we're going to add some configuration here for our connection factory. I will also borrow this from our spring configuration page. Uh, or, or uh, Apache page rather. So I'm going to scroll up a little bit. They had kind of a nice little snippet I could grab here. This is camel.apache.org. Okay, this is what I want. Bean ID active MQ. Control C. And let's go back and let's throw that into our uh, application context. Okay, now let's look at what we have right now. We're already doing our component scan, which is going to give us the annotation uh, dependencies. And then remember that we're doing this all by annotation, but we do have a trump card. That is, if there are two beans with a name that match, then we can specify which bean we want to use. And that's what we're doing here. As a matter of fact, this bean syntax is how we used to use uh, Spring back in the day before we had all the auto wiring and all the uh, dependency injection. In any case, I'm going to go ahead and paste a bean configuration that I've uh, come up with previously. Of course, I'll commit this to GitHub so you'll have this as well. This is the ActiveMQ connection factory. That is one of the classes that we got in our Maven dependency that we just added. And uh, so we're just going to say, OK, this is a JMS connection factory. Broker URL says this is where the queues are living. I have it configured to localhost. It, could, it doesn't have to be on the same host as our server. We could have it hosted somewhere else. That's actually very common if you're communicating from one application to a different application. And then we use the defa default port of 6161 and save. Now let's make a simple class that will write to the queue. Control M. And I'm going to go ahead and put this in the service layer. Although there's a good discussion on where we could put it. But given that our photo processing already exists in plant service, I'm going to go ahead and drop this in service. So I'm going to say new. 
and then I'm going to say class, and we'll, we will call this uh, JMS Beam. That's a really generic name, but okay, we'll stick with that and choose finish. Okay, control M. And now we're going to say, uh, okay, let's say public static void submit string message throws exception. So it might be some reconfiguration we can do about this, but oh, I should at least spell exception correctly. But this will at least get us a start. Now, why did I make this static? I made it static so that we don't have to create an object out of this when we want to send a message. Uh, but we might refactor that later. We might extend this later. We, we have a bit more work to do. We just want to see if we can post the message. So what I'll do is I'm going to say we will say um, active MQ connection factory and then JMS. What did we call it in our uh, what do we call it in our application context? We called it uh, JMS connection factory. So we'll go ahead and borrow that for the variable name. Okay. JMS connection factory. And because we've defined this in our uh, application context. We can use this at inject annotation and control shift uh, O to organize imports and okay Java inject and notice that org Apache ActiveMQ ActiveMQ connection factory appears. Uh, that's good news. That means that our uh, that means that our uh, palm entry has worked okay. Okay, so now in our submit method, I'm going to say JMS connection factory uh, and then we're going to say create connection oh did I misspell it connection factory oh you know what it has to be sta oh okay you know what I'm going to go back on this I'm going to make this non-static honestly now that I think about it because that's going to cause a problem I'm seeing but anyway okay create connection uh, control one Assigned to new local variable. We are going to be doing a lot of these method calls that return something. And so that control one assigned to new local variable is going to be very handy. So this connection, this line is simply connecting us to that queue, uh, to the uh, queue manager that we set up on localhost 6161. Okay, so then we'll say connection dot start. Okay, good. And then we're going to say connection dot create session okay our first argument is is it transacted let's go ahead for simplicity and say false and then the second one what we're going to say is auto acknowledge so we don't have to worry about uh, doing uh, committing to the queue so I'm going to say session dot auto acknowledge that'll be fine so when we talk about transaction, think about a database transaction where we have an atomic unit of work that we can commit or roll back. That's very handy in a uh, very high availability environment where we can't have loss of data. In that case, we might change this around a little bit uh, to be to, to not auto acknowledge and to actually use transactions. In other words, we would do a line of work and then at the end of that line of work we would commit. Auto acknowledge it simply is going to take out that commit step. Now let's say session dot create queue. Oops, session. Oh I'm sorry <laughs> I missed a step there didn't I? Uh, so we're going to say create session control one assign to new local variable and we'll call this session Okay, so this opens up kind of, again, kind of thinking in database terms, and this is very similar to a database. It's like opening a JDBC session or opening a connection uh, with our database. So now we say session, and we're going to say create queue. Now here's the cool part. What I really like about ActiveMQ, uh, if you try to connect to a queue and it doesn't exist, ActiveMQ just goes ahead and makes the queue for you. That really simplifies things over the old ways where you had to configure the queue first and the queue broker, and then you could use it, but only if you configured it first, it was kind of messy. So uh, what do we want to name it? Whatever we want. Let's say photos. Uh, so this is where we're going to put information for post-processing of our photos. 
We're going to put information here like a URL for the photo or URI in other words. And we're going to allow the resizer to make a thumbnail out of it and the watermark process to pick up from this queue. So we'll just call it photos for now. Uh, a footnote here, we really don't like hard coding this text. One of the advantages of having spring is having a lot of our configuration in here so we can easily change it. Hard coding something like a queue name is a bad idea. Again, once we have proven out the concept, we'll come back and we'll take a look at something called JNDI that's going to allow us to make this configurable uh, going to be much better. Okay, and so we're going to say session dot create producer. Okay, and we need to pass in the queue that we've made, which guess what? We have to make the queue. Uh, control one assign to new local variable. And we'll call this photo queue. And then that's what we pass in to create producer down below. Photo queue. And terminate with a semicolon. Okay, uh, control one. So a producer means we're publishing to the queue, where the other end is going to consume off of the queue. Uh, let's just go ahead and call this guy producer. And now we can send our message to the queue. So to send the message, uh, we're going to say session.create. Now take a look, there are different types of messages. There's a bytes message. There's also one called a text message. Create text message. And let's go ahead and pass in the string parameter that we're receiving into this method call. So that way, whatever we pass into the method call is what we'll get put on the queue. So session.create text message, and let's control one, assign to new local variable, and we'll just call this one text message. Okay, so this is the nugget of information that's going to go on the queue. And then we're going to say producer.send, and we're going to pass in our text message. Okay, uh, finally, we'll say connection dot stop and we're all set now there's a lot of overhead here just to send one message normally we would not go through all of this work i know probably a lot of it like wait what's the difference between a connection and a session and a queue normally this is boilerplate stuff that we wouldn't go through every single time is a proof of concept it's okay but um we will as i said we will refactor this the thing we really want to do is use a connection pool, but again, as a proof of concept, just to make sure our queue is up, uh, we'll run with this. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to add the add named annotation. Uh, Control Shift to organize imports and save. And now I'm going to go back to our plant service and I'm going to say I'm going to make an attribute of this type. So we'll say private JMS bean, JMS bean, terminate with a semicolon and add the add inject annotation and save. Okay, uh, now down in our photo processing, if we take a look down here, we should have a save photo method. And what we're eventually going to do, this is our thumbnail processing, and then this is our watermark, which we've done in a previous video. The first chunk here is where we simply save the photo. What we're going to eventually do is take this and move this to a separate thread, separate service. But uh, so this is a good, a good place where we can go ahead and say JMS bean, and then we can invoke our submit. And what do we want to pass? Well, for the moment, honestly, that file, the, the file directory, the, the, whole, the fully qualified file, that's a good thing to pass. So let me say file.toString because that will give our, our downstream processes, the thumbnail and the watermark processes, it will say, hey, here's an image at this location and I would like you to process it. So I will go ahead and leave like so, save. And then I'm going to go ahead and redeploy and we'll take a look. So the server has started. I've selected a specimen. I'm going to go ahead and choose a picture. It's one I've already posted, but no harm there. So I choose open and everything looks good. I'm going to choose submit and that will call our breakpoint. 
So we have our photo processing page that we've seen before. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to step into line 112. First, it's just going to get the path of the photo and then step into one more time. And let's create a connection, start the connection, get a session, get access to the queue, get our producer, which means we're publishing onto the queue, create a text message where the content of the text message is the full path to the image that we've just posted. So as you see here, it was get, plain places, web content, resources, images, plain places, blah, blah, blah. The timestamp, so the auto-generated timestamp, .jpg. And so move, send, stop the connection, and then we simply go back to processing as we were before, and I'm going to hit resume. Now, uh, no exceptions, which is really good news. And of course, we get our success message here. Let's go back and see if it's on the queue. So I'm going to go to my active MQ management page, which is localhost 8161. The default password, uh, username and password is admin and admin. I click on queues and take a look. Sure enough, it has created that queue for me. Okay, so I can click on the queue and I can see the message and when it was posted. So October 29th, 2015, around 923, which is right about uh, the time I'm recording this. I can delete this, and in some cases, depending on the content, I can click and I can see the contents of it as well. So at this point, we've seen how to make a simple connection you know, with some refactoring we're eventually going to want to do, but a simple connection that will add a message to the queue. In our next video, we're going to explore how we can read from the queue as well. And what's nice about that is if we set it up properly, uh, our, our separate thread that's going to read from the queue will only be doing work when it's notified, and it will be notified when we put something on the queue. I look forward to seeing you then.